Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com and I'm here with a, another point of view haircut. Right away, I want to point out that Ryan has a scar on the back of his head and this is something that's been a big issue in the past with uh, haircut videos I've done with him, people thinking that we nicked the back of his head. But um, So we can get that out of the way, but let's start off. Uh, we're using clipper over comb technique. We're cutting a pompadour style. You know, this is something we've done quite a bit of videos on. I don't want you to so much focus on the end result of Ryan's hair. I like using Ryan because he's totally open to being filmed first. And second, just uh, letting me really spend time in detail as haircut. So we're going through clipper over comb, working diagonal back. Um, this is something I've done in the past. What I want you to see from this point of view, what I like about the point of view haircut is you can see uh, exactly from my eyes what's happening and I want you to see the consistency of the combing uh, because that's what's really going to make a nice fluid men's haircut because the challenge with men's hair and what a lot of you would know I mean I think the thing that freaks people out in beauty school is that if you mess up a men's cut or you cut something wrong you can tell because it's so short so um, just going in keeping consistent with your combing and uh, and working through. So you can see that line. I work it just below the uh, parietal ridge, so down more temple area, and we work it back a slight fade down towards the occipital bone in a diagonal back kind of formation. Now I'm gonna go diagonal forward just to work right at the nape of the neck, right on the corner there, and then I'll go back through diagonal back. So it's almost like we're cross-checking um, as I'm going in working clipper over comb. You kind of want to go both ways. So comb it, diagonal back, cut it, then work diagonal forward or vice versa, whatever works best for you. Then we're going to work into the nape of the neck, just working horizontally. Um, that'll I'm using the guideline from what I was just cutting diagonal back. So I can see the short hair over there. But just make sure when you're clipper over combing that you're working the, the blade of the clipper right against the comb. Um, that's why I like using a thicker comb for these type of cuts. Um, we now have on Shop FSE, it's a uh, the 209 YS Park comb. It's great for clippering. Uh, this is one I picked up. I don't know. I'm not sure where I picked this one up, but um, it's great because it's the width of the clipper, so it works well. So same thing, working the, the nape of the neck, working diagonal forward first and then going diagonal back towards it. So you can tell it's really all about the consistency. I, I did the same thing on the other side, so now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Um, I've seen a lot of hairdressers, when they're doing men's cutting, they just go in and just start cutting away, quickly clipper cutting through it, and then all of a sudden you gotta go back and fix everything um, as you're going through. So just uh, make sure that you stay consistent, work an area, and then move on to the next area. Don't just fly through the head and then go back and fix it. Also, you can notice that I'm not moving that clipper really fast. So, uh, you know, I've said this before, but just make sure that you move that clipper along the comb and at a nice speed so that it actually cuts the hair all even. Um, you don't want to rush through this. You can see me working kind of back and forth on that. That's really just to define that line. You know, just keep working that line in. Now I'm going to comb his hair all the way over and then just take from the parietal ridge down and comb it down. That's where I know I want to build that weight up is at that area. So I just push everything else out of the way and focus on the, the hair that I'm working with. I'm going to get a little closer around his hairline. I'm not going to work that too much because uh, in reality I'm going to take that a little bit shorter. So I'm going to grab a different comb for that. This comb's probably about as thick as a one guard, so I definitely want to use a smaller comb later on. Throughout the service, I like to grab the blow dryer down. It's kind of a benefit of having the blow dryers above you, uh, just to get the hair off of them, because any guy that's gotten his haircut, he knows that it's, it's kind of annoying having all that hair fall on you. Um, so just get the hair off there, blow it off, and then get, continue your cut. Plus, you know, it cleans off the hair around where you're creating the haircut, so it can open up and show you 
if you need to work a line a little bit better or whatever. So I'm going to grab my trimmer. Um, this is another wall clipper. I like the T finisher. You know, it just allows me to have a little more length when I'm cutting uh, around the perimeter and everything and around the ears. So now we're going to start working right on his hairline. Um, I like to detail the hairline. I just think it makes a haircut stand out. I know a lot of barbers do this stuff. This isn't really me trying to do a barbering technique, uh, really edging out his haircut. Well, what I'm doing is just detailing the, the sides. I mean, that's kind of what uh, edging a haircut would be. But uh, for Ryan, I'm just trying to make everything have a shape to it. So if, in the more detail work you do, the better the haircut's going to look. And I think this is a lot of the details that, as hairdressers, we leave out. Uh, I don't think barbers so much leave these details out, uh, I guess depending on the barber shop. But um, this is something that is going to really make your men's haircut stand out over anyone else's. So just going in, I'm using now a 234 uh, YS Park comb uh, that we have on this shop now, which is pretty cool. But I'm using that because it's very flexible and it has the wider teeth, but it's, it gets you really close to the skin. So I, I like that a lot. And you can just see I, I'm working that comb through and just detailing everything. I'll do a little uh, trimmer over comb there, but just refining the edges of the haircut. Now we can go behind the ear, just bending his ear down. Now using that T trimmer behind the ear, just working that line in. Uh, you don't want to just pass it through once. Um, you can see I'm working back and forth. Now I'm going to go a little bit tighter in there with the trimmer uh, using a different comb because the first comb we used, is the, the hair is too long uh, with that comb. So now I want to go in with tighter, tighter comb there. Now we're going to work the back. I'm just going to start working my line. And this is one thing that I draw one line first, and then I'm going to round the corner off. Uh, so just using the, the trimmer backwards to define that line. That's another reason why I like the T trimmer, because it's a wider angle. So I'm going to work that line across, connect it, and then I'm just going to round the edge off. It makes it a nice cleaned up look to it. And then I can turn the tr trimmer around and run it and just clean off the, uh, the little hairs on his neck. So same thing here, working the trimmer, connecting it. I just don't want that hair kind of overgrowing. That's what's going to grow out first. So for a guy, you definitely want to get that cleaned up in there. And now I'm going to comb the hair over to the other side, and we're going to work that down. Behind the ear, again, staying consistent. I did the same thing on the other side. Uh, there's not, there's so many times when I first started doing hair that I would be uh, in the middle of a men's cut. I'd cut his eyebrow just to clean it up and then do a little bit of his ear hair. And then I'd take him back and I'd wash him. And then we'd bring him back in. And he'd be like, are you going to do my other ear or eyebrow? And I'm like, oh, yeah, totally. I, you know, I just didn't get to it yet. But, you know, we all forgot. So it's staying consistent working through, making sure that we're uh, doing everything. So if you do think, do it on one side, just make sure that that's where you're headed for the next move is to go over and clean it up on the other side. So I uh, just work my way around the head, staying consistent and doing the same thing. Again, that 234 comb really gets tight in there. So that's why I really like it is just the ability to flex in it to get tight to the head. Now I'm just going to round off that corner. Now you're going to see me working the trimmer. I want to start cleaning up his facial hair just a little bit and all the little hairs that grow around your face because those are all things that when you start trimming them up, it just gives their face more detail and shows more definition within the uh, facial hair and the haircut. It just puts everything together. So I'm going to clean up his facial hair a little bit. Um, I know he likes his facial hair, so I'm not going to take it away, but I just want to detail it, clean it up for him. It's it's an There are add-on services where we would completely clean up your beard or do something like that, but for Ryan, he's not looking for that. He didn't upgrade anything. These are just little uh, 
things that I do just to make sure that he looks clean because you could do a really nice haircut on someone, but if you don't touch their beard or you don't clean up their ears or you don't take care of their nose hairs that are growing out, then it doesn't even look like you did a haircut. So just make sure that you really are paying attention to the detail work within the men's cot. Again, using that trimmer just to detail the edges right around the nape there and take it nice and tight, nice and cleaned up. All right, so now that we got them all cleaned up around the edges, now we're gonna move on to the top. Um, we're gonna use a our spray bottle to wet them down. Uh, this is that Mizutani Fine Mist spray bottle, and it was funny because um, when Mizutani said they were gonna send me one of these, I was like, you know what? All right, I guess that's cool. I had always used a spray bottle from IKEA, uh, and the first time I used it, I was like, are you, oh, like the, you finally realize what using something, uh, even as a spray bottle, a quality spray bottle, what it's like using something like that. When the bottles that we were using from the beauty supply store or wherever, they they spray out like, like a garden hose. And, you know, when you spend a little bit more money on a spray bottle, we just got in these YS Park uh, spray bottles as well. It just, it, it, the mist that comes out, it doesn't soak the person and they're not dripping wet. Uh, when you're wetting them down. So, you know, that was a big moment for me realizing that, you know, th there is a reason to spend a little bit of extra money um, as you're on your tools and what you're using because you use it every day on people. So we're going to part his hair. We got them all wet down. Now I'm going to make a nice clean parting where I'm going to part his hair t uh, for the finished result of the haircut. We're going to work scissor over comb. The reason I like to do this wet on this particular part is I want the hair to clump together a little bit more. Uh, you could do it dry as well. I know different people have different opinions on that. When I'm working scissor over comb around the parietal ridge area, I like to just, you know, have a little bit more grip on the hair. Uh, so sometimes I feel like it tends to push the hair a bit when it's dry. And if you're going to push the hair at all, you're just going to take more time getting a clean line. So now we're going to work over our fingers. So you'll see my sectioning is diagonal back in a way, following the round of the head. What I want to do is just connect that to the back of his head. So some people have a disconnect back there uh, with this type of haircut, but I like a nice cleaned up back to the haircut. Um, so we're going to work over our fingers. Oh, adjusting the camera there. We're going to work over our fingers and you'll see how the uh, tip, I think I'm asking him, does this camera angle look good? So um, I'm running that one steady blade across my finger. So even though I'm working on top of my fingers, there's still no Pac-Man movement to the scissor blade, just one blade moving. I have my guide blade resting on my finger and then I'm just moving across cutting. So I'm gonna check the calic area, make sure that it's kind of moving in the way that I want it to. So we'll pass that around. And if I feel like I need to adjust it, you know, that's a good time to adjust it. I think as hairdressers, we get caught up thinking if we did it one way, we have to keep throughout the haircut doing it that way. And I think a calic is completely breaks all the rules. If you want uh, to cut a calic differently because you feel like it's going to make it fall different, then you should go ahead and do that. Um, if I want to leave a little bit more length around that calic so that it falls right, then I'm going to do that. I'm not going to necessarily match the calic up with the haircut. So slight over direction back with this, but really just following the round of the head and just cleaning up the ends. Ryan likes the top of his hair long and with the pompadour, you don't want to cut the bangs too short because they won't pop, it won't pop up and over. So I want to make sure you don't do that. Now I'm going to push this back. He's got a little bit of you know, a recession in his hair, I guess. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to take it nice and tight so that, that pompadour part of his hair, uh, as it, it creates that kind of pomp feel, I want this uh, part in the uh, parietal ridge area. I don't want that to get in the way. I want 
the pompadour to lay flat over all of it. So I'm going to take it nice and tight right around that recession area. Again, working scissor over comb. I did it on the other side. Now I'm going to come over here, staying consistent, working uh, side to side, making sure that I do the same thing uh, with the same movements on both sides to get a balanced haircut. And just see the consistency. I'm not bouncing that blade too much. I have my steady blade there, working it up the head and uh, let, allowing the other blade to come down and cut the hair. So we're going to comb it back, check it. So with my men's cuts, I book out a half an hour. I like to go through and, and do these extra details. Plus we do two rinses. We do the hot towel treatment, all of that. So, um, you know, I, I think in a barbershop, you're definitely, if you're charging less, um, I charge $40, $45 for my men's cuts now. Um, so for $45, I want to give them my time and, uh, you know, give them the couple rinses, give them the hot towel, all of that stuff for extra service added to it. Um, and Ryan's one of our members. So he comes in every two weeks to get his hair cut. So, uh, you know, I'm going to blow it dry now, check it, make sure it looks good. And then, uh, we'll rinse him after that, but I just want to go through, work on the details, give him my time, and you know that's what makes a haircut worth more. So now we're going to detail his beard. Like I said, this is not, I don't charge him extra for this. He's already paying $45 for his haircut. So what I want to do is just go in and add detail to his beard. I'm not creating a new look for him on his beard. Uh, that's not what this service is. This is just me uh, getting kind of the, the random hairs that are growing or whatever, just detailing and cleaning it all up. We're going to work his eyebrow. So I'm basically working on one half of his face first, and then we'll work on the other half. Detailing the eyebrow. And this is something I don't even ask if they want it um, because I'm not changing anything about them. I'm just cleaning them up. So sometimes if you ask a guy about this, he's going to say no. And the reason he's going to say no is because he doesn't, he, if he might feel uncomfortable about it or whatever, but if you just go ahead and do it, his wife will thank you and he will thank you at the end. So just going through cleaning the, the stray hairs that are, that are growing a little bit longer than everything else. Just going in, taking those off, cleaning it up. Now we're going to work the other half of his face. The thing I like about these point of view haircuts is this is not edited up. Uh, so it allows you to really just get a glimpse into how I'm working at the salon. You know, they're a little bit longer. This is the basically the entire service besides the shampoo. I didn't put that in there because, you know, guys don't need to see that every time. But, um, you know, just watching everything that I'm doing. A little free hand over the mustache. Sometimes you don't need to get your comb in there every time. Those hairs are so coarse. They're sticking straight out of the head. So I just go pass over it uh, and create my length by hand that way. Working through a little trimmer over comb, cleaning up his beard. And then his neck hair there, I'm just going to clean that up with the trimmer. Um, you know, it'll still give him a little scruff, which he likes, but uh, it just cleans it up a little bit more because uh, personally, the neck hair should not be quite as long. I, I don't, I like a little scruff in there, even for me, but when you have a, a beard, I think it's good to have a little shadow down there, but not the same length as, as your beard. So we're just going to clean that up for him. Ryan's got a really strong chin line. 
uh, jawbone, chin line. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but jawbone. Um, so, you know, that kind of, it, it defines that as well, adds a little shadow to it, um, which I think looks pretty good. Again, freehand. Those hairs are sticking straight out, so I don't necessarily need to have a comb under it. I mean, that's what a comb is really doing for it anyways. So I just use the comb when I need to, but just go in a little freehand. That's another tip with the T trimmer. T trimmer allows you to get in there. If you have just a regular trimmer, it's hard to reach all those spots. All right, cleaning up his neck, and then we should be good to go. All right, so now we're going to grab a brush. We got our vest brush from uh, the shop, uh, Shop FSE. So the thing I like about this brush is that you can get it as hot as you want. It doesn't melt, so that's one good thing. And the second thing is it's got really tight tension on the hair. So if you're trying to create a nice polished look, this is the brush for you, uh, whether you're smoothing women's hair or trying to lay down uh, colicky hair like Ryan has. So we're going to start with a leafing technique in the front to help pop up the front of the hair. And then you'll see me using the nozzle of the blow dryer, just laying that pretty much flat against his head, allowing the air to flow over his uh, the hair shaft to create maximum amount of shine in his hair and just to keep the hair under control. So the, the blow dryer isn't moving much. The brush is doing all the work and the blow dryer is just allowing the air to, to flow over. So we're gonna work that calic back and forth. So I'm brushing the hair basically to get it to lay in the, at this point, how I want it to lay it for the pompadour hairstyle. So we're just going to brush right at the parting, right at the parietal ridge. We're going to brush that straight down, use that airflow to kind of get it to lay there. Then we're going to work that calic area. A little bit more leafing. I want volume in this hairstyle. That's really, you know, what this hairstyle is all about is having that pop of volume right in the front and kind of flowing into the back. Using that tension, you can see how tight I'm holding on to that and uh, just pushing it up and it just pops the front of that hairstyle right up. So you're, the, the key of this is not, the product should be the thing that gives it the final detail but really the blow dry should get the hair where you want it to go and then the product's just gonna polish it off and hold it all day. But you want to create the style with the brush and blow dryer. So now we're gonna grab our cool grease and this is a new product that I'm uh, carrying on the shop. And the thing I like about this is it has, it's very water soluble, probably the most water soluble product I've ever used, which means that it will rinse out easy for guys. You won't get that buildup on your scalp, but the shine on this product is so awesome. And it's perfect for hair like Ryan's or even thicker, coarser hair because it doesn't have a major, major hold, but it just puts that hair and uh, it gives it a lot of shine and creates a pompadour hairstyle really well. So we're gonna use it. I put a little bit in my hands, run it together, and then I start in the uh, in the sides, and then I work it through the top and the front. You don't wanna start right in the front because you'll get too much product up there. But we're gonna work it down the sides and the back, and then take a little bit extra. I have a little bit more buildup on my hands, so I just grab it and I polish the sides up. And that's what the product's all about, is just giving it that shine and the hold. Uh, to create the hairstyle. So I'm gonna run it through with my hands, but that's not gonna give me my final result because it should be a polished, clean look to it. So we'll get the product saturated throughout, then I'm gonna grab a comb and kind of comb it back. Now if you didn't do the blow dryer before this, um, what you would notice is that you put the product in, probably in the wet hair, and it would just fall flat. And I think 
a lot of people, a lot of guys try to put product in their wet hair, but most male products are water soluble in some way. So as soon as you put it in your wet hair, it kind of goes away. You don't even get the full use of the product. So you want to have dry hair. What I tell every one of my guys is, um, even if you don't want to blow dry your hair, make sure that the last thing you do before you walk out of the house is put your styling product in. Because if you do it right out of the shower, what's going to happen is you're not going to, um, the water is going to take over the product and you're going to have a diluted product. So uh, the cool grease goes in the, the hair really well, gives him that nice kind of clean shine to his hair and uh, gives him a nice pompadour look. So the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the, the first part of the haircut. I was using my uh, Mizutani Type-C2 scissors. This is the uh, Blacksmith Fit 6.5 inch. I like that for scissor over comb as well because it's a longer scissor. So when I'm going through at the end and just putting on final touches, kind of the, the finished product, this is just me being able to go through and blend the haircut exactly the way that I want it and to... Uh, just give it that little de extra detail that we've talked about. Um, you know, I think this is what is going to allow you to charge a little bit more money for your men's cuts and get it is is the details that you put into it. Guys like that stuff. Um, and, you know, this is Ryan is kind of one of those guys that likes coming in, getting his hair cleaned up every couple weeks, and uh, he likes this type of treatment. So, I see a little shadow in there, so what I'm going to do is just go in with that scissor over comb again and just tighten it up a bit more. Sometimes when you're going through the first time with the haircut and you cut it, it looks good, and then you go rinse it out, and then you know you see that little shadow. So I like to go in, just clean it up, add a little bit more detail in there. All right, guys, so that's another point of view haircut with uh, my good friend Ryan. And you can see it uh, it's a great finished product. It's a nice pompadour hairstyle. Uh, it's got a really clean feel to it, and it's all about the detail work. So I think if there's anything that you guys focus on from this video, uh, the number one thing would be just focus on the details. The haircut it is what it is. Uh, this is something that if you saw this haircut in a magazine, you probably know how to do it. Um, but I think the attention to detail, working around the edges, the facial hair, the eyebrows, the ears, everything uh, that you saw in this, is that's really what this haircut's all about. Um, we're going to snap a few pictures. I posted this on our Facebook page, uh, freesaloneducation.com. So hopefully you guys like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, all freesaloneducation.com, and uh, we will see you guys on the next video. Thank you.